This Sportsnet Central Update is presented by Atlantis Casino Resort Spa Reno. 100 days from now, in a majestic city halfway across the earth, the world will come together for an Olympics unlike any other. After a year that has tested us all, we look to Tokyo for moments of triumph and joy. Where athletes from near and far have their chance to realize dreams put on hold on the world's biggest stage. 11,000 athletes competing in 41 sports with more medal events than ever before. Big stars and emerging phenoms generating the sportsmanship and spirit, the grit and grace that the Olympics always delivers. On the courts, in the pools, under the lights, Tokyo will summon their strength, showcase their resilience, and provide a thrilling, uplifting experience we can share together. The Tokyo Olympic Games coming in 100 days on the networks of NBC. Really cool that the Olympics will be back. And I got a simple question for both of you gentlemen. It feels like the one thing missing from Steph Curry's resume is a gold medal. So should Steph Curry play in the Olympics this summer? If he wants to, if, if that's a burning desire for him, I think he should. Great coach Popovich is coaching. Um, but I, I, it all depends on how he's feeling physically, but I think that would that would be a nice thing to add to his resume. What about you, Darrell? I agree with Molly. Yeah, if, he, if he's up to it, but we all know Steph Curry is one of the best competitors in the game, so I'm pretty sure he's going he's gonna to be out there. No doubt. This guy in the third quarter today went eight for eight. It was the first time a Warrior finished an entire quarter on at least eight shot attempts since Clay Thompson scored 37 in the quarter against the Kings. I mean, we didn't even realize he was eight for eight in the quarter, <laughs> six for six for the three-point line, and Steph Curry's going to sit down, or he did sit down with Kendra Andrews and Grant Liffman on the Dubs Talk podcast. We'll play a little snippet a little later in the show. It's all oh, right now, and it's going to be available tomorrow at 7 a.m. Listen to the snippet before we get to Steve Kerr. Draymond Green was on this pod not too long ago, and he uh, announced to the world, or to us at the time, uh, that he was the greatest defender of all time. So um, to try to get Buzzy to start off this pod, let's start off with this. Have you finally accepted and are willing to call yourself the greatest shooter of all time? Ah, that's a tease right there. Going to have to listen to that podcast coming out at 7 a.m. on all platforms. That's going to be a good one. The Dubs Talk podcast there. As you see the full scoreboard, Curry with 42 points. D. Wright called the 40-burger tonight. Draymond with the triple-double. Warriors tie a franchise record with 24 made threes tonight against OKC. They hadn't done it since 2019 against New Orleans. Let's hear from the head coach, Steve Kerr, on the big night for the Golden State Warriors. Well, Steve, it was just a four-point game at the end of the first quarter, but what did you guys do to blow this out? Well, I thought our defense got a lot better in the second quarter, Kareth, and, uh, you know, we finally started getting into the ball, and, and then that loosened up the game so that we were able to get out and transition and, and uh, you know, kind of take, take charge. And they were on the second night of a back-to-back, -back, so we knew they were going to be a little tired. And thought we did a good job of just pushing the tempo and, and breaking the game open. At at the start of this month, we were kind of talking about, you know, a hobbled Steph. He was on the tailbone injury. Um, now he's he's really in the midst of maybe the greatest scoring stretch of his career. Has that surprised you, how quickly he's returned? And, I mean, he scored 30, I think, in like eight straight games now. Yeah, nothing surprises me with Steph. Um, you know, he, di he did have a, a stretch earlier this year uh, that was – it seemed similar, maybe not quite uh, to this – extreme but you know he uh he's he's obviously so capable of this and and you know when we play small uh like like we're doing um it spreads the floor and he gets more opportunities and you know draymond's assists are way up when we play small as well so it's a it's it's really a comfortable uh game for steph and draymond uh when you know when we play this way so maybe it doesn't surprise you what Steph can do, but what is it like watching him follow up a, a game with 10 three-pointers with a game with 11 three-pointers and then pretending like he wants to check back in? Yeah, I, I was actually joking with him. I told him he was going back in and he, he didn't understand the joke. He just wanted to run back onto the floor. That's how hot he was. But, um, 
No, I, I uh, it, it, it seems like every night, even though I say, you know, nothing surprises me, I'm still in awe of the shot making. Uh, it's just incredible. The level of confidence and skill is, is just stunning. And uh, it's, it's beautiful to watch. It's, it's a, a man at the peak of his powers with a, a lifetime of, of training and work and um, not just on his body, but on his mind. Um, this is a guy who is, uh, he's functioning at a level that very human, very few human beings have ever functioned at in their, you know, in their particular field. It's, it's just beautiful to watch. Outside of Steph's 11 three-pointers, you guys tied your franchise record with 24 three-pointers, I think it was. Is that just a lucky shooting night or what goes into being able to hit 24 three-pointers? Well, ball movement, that's the whole thing, Kendra. Um, you know, when we move the ball like we did tonight um, and we're going to get open looks. And uh, I thought, you know, that was really key. I think Bayes has been fantastic for us, um, you know, playing more, getting more of an opportunity. And, uh, you know, when, when he's on that weak side, he's doing a good job of recognizing either, you know, knocking down the shot or just quickly moving the ball. And um, so he's he's been great. He's really given us a boost. And obviously, you know, Steph and Draymond are in perfect sync together. So they're getting the defense to react. And then everybody else is just uh, responding and moving the ball to the open guy. Gary Payton had four steals in the fourth quarter and a block. Uh, what did you see from him? And is there a chance maybe he could uh, get a rotation shot at some point soon? Well, he was fantastic. Um, my uh, assistant coaches have been telling me, you know, that when we put him in, we're not going to want to take him out because of his defense. And uh, and and now I see it. You know, he's uh, just he was all over the place. He's got great hands, anticipation. And uh, I mean, who knows what's going to happen rotation wise, but he was very impressive. Coach Mark is um, obviously you guys matched your, um, you know, the three game win streak, the longest streak you guys had this season. How important is it to go get back on the court tomorrow against Cleveland and, and extend the streak? It's really important, Mark. You know, we're in the midst of a, a playoff race and uh, we've been searching for momentum uh, all season long. And uh, I think we can all feel it right now. You know, we feel that uh, something is clicking and, and uh, the things are happening. We're, we're, you guys were, were really connected out there. They were having a great time. The locker room, you know, everybody's excited. Um, it feels like this is an opportunity that uh, it is right here for us to, to go on a little run. See, ball movement is always a staple for your offense, but uh, has that been with the uh, physical disadvantages you guys have right now being so small, has that been even more emphasized or where we stand there? It's always em emphasized, Monty, but um, the, the, the ball is just going to move more, um, you know, with, with uh, you know, a small lineup. It just is, you know, the nature of the game is, you know, shooters everywhere and, and, uh, you know, whether it's Draymond or Loon in the pick and roll, both guys are so smart that, um, you know, Steph's going to draw two and the ball will kick and then everybody just plays from there. So it's just easier to do when you when you play a, a smaller lineup like we're doing. All right, last one for Karis because we're going to want to hurry up tonight. We're supposed to be in the Camila at 3.30 in the morning. So go ahead, Karis. Ooh, I just wanted to build on your feeling that you can sense something clicking because Draymond said earlier this month, no play in game is going to motivate me at this point in my career. But in the same breath, he said, I want to win every game. I hate losing. So what do you sense in everybody's engagement for this mission to start climbing up the standings? I'm sorry, I, I, I missed the last part of the question. What are you sensing about everyone's engagement to for this mission to keep climbing up the standings? Oh, everybody's engaged. We got a, a good chunk of the season left and, and we're playing well. So we have a great opportunity and everybody's excited about it. So, you know, here we go. Thank you, Mark. All right, let's take a look at the Western Conference standing here and the Warriors. Moving Snatched up. Snatched the San Antonio up. Spurs. So if the playoffs started tonight, they would host the Spurs in a 9-10 game. And of course, Ooh. the winner of that game will play the loser of the 7-8 game. But Dallas, you better watch out. The Warriors are three games behind you, and they are peaking at the right time, winning four of their last five, three in a row. 
and everything was all doom and gloom against the Washington Wizards Friday night, but they bounced back, beat Houston, took care of business there. Big win against Denver Monday night, and then tonight they handled their business on a first to five here. So you see what Steve Kerr saying there, Darrell, saying that, hey, we're going to continue to go on the run. I feel it coming. This may be the time the run's coming, Darrell. I think it's that time. I think it's that time. We've been talking about it all year, and I feel like it's some games that's ahead of them that they can go out there and take care of. Mully and I, we talked about this pregame about 4-1. and one. That'd be super nice on this road trip. 3-2, and 4-1, and one, I, I'd rather 4-1. and one. So I think, I think it's time. I think they, they're, they're you know, getting hot at the right time. I think they're, they're very much primed to go on a run here. First and foremost, because they're playing great basketball. Yep. And secondly... The schedule is very advantageous to do that. But the most important thing is how they're playing. And now they're going to small ball. I think that's the best way for them to play. Uh, with Looney and Draymond manning the big positions, Draymond running the point center, and having the floor space, as Steve Kerr mentioned, Steph Curry is going to get a lot of opportunities. And when they double him, it's just about moving the basketball. And tonight, that accounted for 39 assists. Wow. So this is a good time for them to get, find their rhythm. Uh, the schedule's in their favor. They just got to take one game at a time and, and stay focused. I think we got a nice little run coming here. No doubt Cleveland tomorrow night, a team they beat by 31 back at Chase Center February 15th, but it was a three-point shooting tonight as well. The assists, Mully, as you just pointed out, 39 assists, but they found the three-point shooters. Started with that man right there, Stephen Curry, with 11 threes, 11 for 16. They tied a franchise record tonight. For, with 24 threes, it's the most in franchise history, tying the record they set back in 2019 against the New Orleans Pelicans. Look at Baysmore getting on the action. Jordan Poole, who we just talked to to start the show, had three threes. This team is finding the open man, Darrell, and that led to a 50-point third quarter. 50! So the Warriors are hitting the outside shots right now. They're hot from the three-point line. Coach Kerr said it all. He said when that ball is moving, everybody gets their shots. And to shoot 20, to make 24 threes and shoot 51%, that's pretty impressive. You see the tweet here from Warriors PR, Mully. Uh, 24 threes. I thought the Warriors, with all that talent, KD, Clay, they would have more than 24 threes in a game. This speaks volumes about the way the team's playing offensively. Absolutely. And you notice the ball movement, right? It's beautiful ball moving off a lot of times off Steph Curry double team. So the ball's moving. They had 39 assists. 24 three-pointers out of 47. That's 51%. Wow. And the other thing you notice in those clips, they were wide open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the defense was not there. But I think the offense is finding their flow, uh, playing small ball. Draymond had a beautiful game, triple-double, 16 assists. Yep. Um, so I think this is, the, this is their, the formula for them to go on a run. Ball movement, solid defense, um, team rebounding, because when you play small, you got to rebound yep. the ball, and keep your, your turnovers down. So they did everything perfect tonight, especially got that game over with early because they have a back-to-back -to -back tomorrow in Cleveland. No doubt. Flying to Cleveland tonight. They'll play the Cavs tomorrow night here on NBC Sports Bay Area. But we look at the Warriors bench because we keep talking about the Warriors bench, fellas. What can the bench do to step up? Well, Jordan Poole started the process with 14 first-half points there in the first quarter, and they combined for 53 points. Everybody got in on the action. D. Lee, Gary Payton the second, played nine minutes. Darrell, he showed some good heads. He scored 10 there in the fourth quarter there, so the bench is starting to play better. And once they get Kelly Oubre Jr. back, now the confidence Kent Bazemore is playing with in that starting lineup, you add that to the bench, and all of a sudden, they're hopping around, they're hitting the three-point shot, and they're playing solid defense. They're playing some great basketball. Over the last few games, they've been playing well. And we always talk about it. It's not always about scoring. It's the little things you do when, it's, when the starters are on the bench. So I think they've been playing some great basketball the last three games. Jordan Poole's been a big spark plug off the bench. Not only who's scoring with his playmaking and organizing the team, and the rest of the players, they're playing to their strengths. If you're a shooter, get to the spot-up shot. I thought Gary Payton... Two tonight yeah. was really good defensively. Yep. He's a player that can have an influence on the game defensively, something they really need. G League DPOY, GP2 right. that is. And you talk about the second unit there, 39 points in the second quarter. But next, we got a little trivia time here. It's David Tetlis trivia right here on Warriors Post Game Live.